Burns. Treating the burn wound. Escherotomy. Circumferential full thickness burns to the limbs require emergency surgery. The tourniquet effect of this injury is easily treated by incising the whole length of full thickness burns. This should be done in the mid-axial line, avoiding major nerves. One should remember that an escherotomy can cause a large amount of blood loss. Therefore, adequate blood should be available for transfusion if required. Key features of escherotomy placement. Upper limb. Mid-axial, anterior to the elbow, medially to avoid the ulnar nerve. Hand. Midline in the digits. Release muscle compartments if tight. Best done in theater and with an experienced surgeon. Lower limb. Mid-axial, posterior to the ankle, medially to avoid the saphenous vein. Chest. Down the chest, lateral to the nipples, across the chest, below the clavicle, and across the chest at the level of the sifosternum. General rules. Extend the wound beyond the deep burn diathermy. Any significant bleeding vessels, apply hemostatic dressing and elevate the limb postoperatively. Full thickness and deep partial thickness burns. Initially should be dressed with an antibacterial dressing to delay the onset of colonization of wound. The four most common dressings for these wounds are Silver sulfadiazine cream, 1%, silver nitrate solution, 0.5%, maponide acetate cream, silver sulfadiazine, and cerium nitrate. Wounds should be reassessed after 48 hours because burns that initially appear superficial may well deepen over time. All burnt tissue needs to be excised. Stable cover permanent or temporary should be applied. Tangential shaving and split skin grafting must be done. If there is delayed reconstruction of burns, eyelids must be treated before exposure keratitis. Transposition flaps and Z-plasties with or without tissue expansion are useful. Full thickness grafts and free flaps may be needed for large or difficult areas. Hypertrophy is treated with pressure garments. Pharmacological treatment of itch is important. Superficial partial thickness wounds and mixed depth wounds. Superficial burns will heal and need simple dressings. The following are used for treating superficial partial thickness wounds and mixed depth wounds. Antimicrobial salves. Salves are generally applied directly to the wound. Silver sulfadiazine, maphenide acetate, bacitracin, Neomycin, polymyxin B, nystatin, mupirazin. Antimicrobial soaks. Soaks are generally poured into cotton dressings on the wound. Silver nitrate, maphenide acetate, sodium hypochlorite, acetic acid. Synthetic coverings used are opsite, biobrain, integra, and transite. Biologic dressings used are xenograft, derived from pigskin, an allograft, sourced from homograft, often cadaver. Topical antimicrobials used in burn management. Topical antimicrobials play a crucial role in the management of burn wounds. They help in preventing bacterial colonization and infection, thereby facilitating the healing process. Here's an overview of commonly used topical antimicrobials in burn care. Sulfur sulfadiazine, 1% cream, provides broad-spectrum prophylaxis against bacterial colonization, particularly efficient against Pseudomonas and methazone-resistant Staphylococcus aureus, less active against some gram-negative aerobes compared to other agents. It is commonly used due to its broad-spectrum coverage. Silver nitrate solution, 0.5%. Highly effective as prophylaxis against Pseudomonas colonization. Drawbacks. Needs frequent reapplication every two to four hours. Can cause black staining of furniture surrounding the patient. May induce metabolic acidosis. Maphenide acetate. 5% cream. It's known for its painful application. Popular in the United States for its efficacy. It's associated with metabolic acidosis. 
silver sulfadiazine, and cerium nitrate. Useful for full thickness burns. Benefits Cerium nitrate forms a sterile eschar, boosting cell mediated immunity. Reduces cell mediated immune suppression, particularly in elderly patients. Drawbacks Induces a hard effect on the burn skin. Resuscitation formulas in burn management. Affected fluid resuscitation is critical in the management of burn patients to maintain hemodynamic stability and prevent complications. Various formulas are used to calculate the fluid requirements based on the extent of the burn. Here's an overview of some commonly used resuscitation formulas. Parkland formula. Crystalloid volume. 4 milliliters per kilogram per percent total body surface area burn. Colloid volume, none. Free water, none. This formula is widely used for adult burn patients. It calculates the total fluid requirement for the first 24 hours post-burn, with half the volume given in the first 8 hours and the remaining over the next 16 hours. Brook formula. Crystalloid volume, 1.5 milliliters per kilogram per percent total body surface area burn. Colloid volume, 0.5 milliliter per kilogram per percent total body surface area burn. Free water, 2 liters. The Brook formula also calculates the fluid requirement for the first 24 hours. It includes a colloid component, which is a key difference from the Parkland formula. Galveston formula, pediatric. Crystalloid volume, 5,000 milliliters per square meters burn area plus 1,500 milliliters per square meters total body surface area. Colloid volume, none. Free water, none. It's specifically designed for pediatric patients. This formula takes into account both the burn surface area and the total body surface area reflecting the higher fluid turnover in children. Additional aspects of treating the burn patient. Analgesia. Simple oral analgesics to intravenous opiate are used depending upon the degree of burns. Nutrition. Burn patients need extra feeding. Nasal gastric tube should be placed in all patients over 15% burns. Removing the burn and achieving healing stops the catabolic drive. Infection control. Burn patients are more prone to infection. Sterile precautions must be vigorous. Swabs should be taken regularly. Rise in white blood cell count, thrombocytosis, and increased catabolism are warning signs of infection. Nursing care should be done. Physiotherapy. Elevation, splintage, Exercise, reduce swelling, and improve outcome. A psychological evaluation should be done. Whenever a case of burns comes to emergency, first thing to be followed is basics of resuscitation. A. Airway control. B. Breathing and ventilation. C. Circulation. D. Disability, evaluation of neurological status. E. Exposure with environmental control. F. Fluid resuscitation. Fluid resuscitation should be done according to Parkland's formula after assessing the percentage of burns and Ringer lactate is fluid of choice. Assess the degree of burns. First degree wounds. Treatment with topical salves to decrease pain and keep the skin moist. In second degree wounds, temporary biological dressings or synthetic covering are used. Daily dressing changes with topical antibiotics, cotton gauze, and elastic wraps. In second-degree wounds, temporary biological dressings or synthetic covering are used. In deep second-degree and third-degree burns, excision and skin grafting are recommended. That's all for the video. We'll see you next time.